Greetings and salutations, viewers. I'm Star Princess HLC, and welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. When I last left off, we were still wandering around with Mayu, trying to find more Shige, essentially. Got a few wrong ends, and we ended up running into Yoshiki after a flashback. And now we're in a flashback where we find out uh, what happened to Yoshiki and Ayumi, because when we ran into Yoshiki, Ayumi had disappeared because she got possessed, so... Now we're here in the shower area, and there's a note on the wall here. Check the third from the right. Magic! Or supernatural of any some type. The third from the right. So do I check one of these? Okay, so the third from the right. So would it be this one? Faucet is rusted over and the handle is spinning freely. It's unlikely any water will ever come out from these pipes again. So if I do, I check... It should be this one then, right? Oh no. If it's the third for the right, maybe it's this one. Aha! Upon twisting the handle, the tin shower head above spun slightly, and a small bent piece of wire fell out from it onto the ground. That's probably gonna be important somehow. Yeah, we could use it to lockpick, I guess. Alright, so let's actually go to the pool. Maybe then I can actually go into that area that's locked off. Because we can't get into it normally. I can grab this body over here. It's a apparently fresh corpse floating in the pool. Looks to be that of a female middle school student, based on her uniform and relative size. Because we're all apparently really good at telling the shape and size and such of... Bodies. I don't know how we have that ability, but we do! The back of her head seems to have been bashed in, revealing white skull and pink brain tissue through the parts in her hair. She must have been struck pretty hard, probably by a large hammer. Her student ID tag is floating right next to her with big bold letters making it legible even from a distance. Takine Municipal Middle School. Chiaki Hiyama. Alright, is there any other bodies in the pool while I'm looking? Just curious. I mean, I really don't think it does much for me having all this, but no, doesn't look it. So I guess we'll move past the locker room into the hall then, see where this goes, and figure out where in the storyline we are in this weird time loop that makes no sense. Well, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense. Uh, we're just kind of on this weird plane of existence called Heavenly Host. Alright, so let's try the next hallway. Eventually, I'm gonna probably hit a dead end somewhere, so... Let's see... Anything in this hallway? Doesn't appear to be... So, we'll try... Hmm. Yeah, let's try going... This way? I don't know. Eventually, we gotta hit a dead end, because eventually it's like, nope, you're not allowed to explore anymore. You're just gonna have to advance the plot, so... Suck it. Alright, let's see what happens this way. Mm, doesn't appear to be anything on this hallway. Let's try the exit first. Maybe Ryu is still there and we can die horribly there, too. No, Ryu is not here, as is the bot, not the body that we saw earlier. What's this? The door is frozen place, decoration can't be opened. Okay. Can I look out the note, but just uh, it says dead still. Okay, fair enough. So, which hall should I go down? Well, this one's got dead end area, so I only try this area first and maybe see if it's blocked off. Nope, still not blocked off yet. No bodies. Alright, keep pressing forward then, Yoshiki. See what happens. No, doesn't seem to be anything here. Alright, what's more? Eventually we gotta hit a dead end, correct? Oh, there's a dead body, that's a plus. Or a negative, depending. It's a decayed corpse. Based on outfit and height, it appears to be a junior high school girl. 
Student ID name tag lying on the ground nearby. Shobu University Middle School, Mamoru Sukano. Yay, we get to collect more tags of the dead. It's like typing of the dead, except you're not actually typing. You're just reading. It's reading of the dead. Alright, let's try 4A then. Nope, okay. 4A is locked, so... Can't go into 4A unless I can pick the lock. Can I pick the lock? Yeah, there we go. Let's try it. You are not the master of unlocking. That is designated for Jill Valentine, I'll have you know. Yeah, just keep just keep making him feel bad. Can't argue that one. The door seems to have been successfully unlocked. Yo, don't act so surprised. I am amazing. I am. I do wonder how often he has done this, since he was apparently a juvenile delinquent in the past. And he's gotten better with Ayumi's help, but she still seems to like to mock him for his past. I don't like that. Alright, so... Let me go down the hall really quick, just to see if there's anything down the hall. Besides... A door that, uh, is frozen in place and doesn't seem to do anything. And no bodies around here, so I guess we're going into foray, because why the hell not? Oh good, orchestra string, that's a good start. Really? いや、だからこの部屋が変だって。シノマ君、前も同じこと言わなかった。うん。この部屋よ。ここ前も見たことある。私たちここで。Okay, she's starting to remember the time loops too. Even though Oh, hey, there he is. Hey, Ryu. Uh, he's a ghost. He could just poof wherever. Duh. Yeah, an evil little ghost boy. Oh, don't worry, she will. If you were Satoshi, she would probably sacrifice herself, but if it's just you, she doesn't give a monkey. Oh, stop being a brat. Who put you in charge? He's trying to help you, you pain in the ass. Hi! Boop. Hi. Got you! His icy child-sized hands caught hold of my wrists and wouldn't let go. Try as I might, I couldn't shake him. Are we gonna go back to the burying alive thing? Oh, nope, okay. Apparently now we're in Slaughterhouse. It's the blood on the wall. When I came to, I found myself restrained. I couldn't move a muscle. I was lying face up on some kind of table with both my arms and both my legs firmly bound by rope, I guess? It was digging into my skin, whatever it was. Yeah, passed out. You're kind of hoping that you did pass out at this point. Yeah, well. She doesn't order me around. 
Maybe I should have listened, but we'll see. My head was the only part of my body that didn't have its movements prohibitively restricted, so I was able to look around the room to some extent. The walls and ceiling seemed to be made of dirt or mud. I didn't get the impression that I was in the school anymore. Like I said, you're probably in slaughterhouse of some kind. It looked and felt kind of like I was in some basement room, or more specifically, a mine or a bomb shelter or something. Hmm. Can also be in the Texas Chainsaw Mask, but I don't know. Thick, globby bloodstains saturate every corner of the room, and the stench in the air was enough to send a shiver down even the most hardened spine. Technically, our spine's kind of hard to begin with, they're bone. It seemed fairly apparent what this room was used for. At least it was as apparent as it needed to be. But the scariest part was... I remembered this place. Or I had a nagging sense that I'd been here before, anyway. Much like Shinazaki had said about that weird classroom just moments before. Well, last time you just managed to escape by sheer luck. And I'm fairly certain this is when um, Yoshikazu smacked him upside the head and captured him. And supposedly he managed to get out. Well, we don't really know how he got out. Hi, Sachiko. <laughs> Oh, don't you look just lovely. Uh-oh. Hi, Yoshikazu. We were just talking about you. The voice belonged to a little girl who looked like she was right around 10 years old at most. She was wearing a red dress and staring at me through a mop of messy black hair with a smirk on her face and a condescending glint in her eyes. Such cool. Oh, he knows her. Amazing. He knows her. Oh, he knows her. He's remembering stuff from the previous time loop. I muttered a name without thinking, surprising myself. How did I know who this was? Or more to the point, who was Sachiko? <laughs> How could you forget? Just saying. She remembers too, somehow. Um. Don't antagonize the evil little girl, just saying. In the very next moment, everything around me seemed to go white. Ugh. This is already starting out on a great foot, isn't it? Yes. Again, don't antagonize the evil ghost child. Sashka was now staring at me with a cold, unmoved, and unwavering expression. I was in more pain than I'd ever felt in my entire life. I focused my gaze on the filthy giant at her side, who seemed to be doing her bidding. It's okay, Yoshikazu. To an extent, I guess, I don't know. His enormous hammer was still resting on the mess that was previously my right ankle up until about a few seconds ago. He likes his hammer time. He's very big into MC Hammer. I was all too aware that the extreme impact had pierced my flesh, shattered my bones, and even sprayed the room with shards of marrow. Thanks for the image. <coughs> this was beyond pain. Every last nerve ending in my body was on alert. I could feel the underside of my skin. I wanted to puke, but knew it would do no good. Especially since I'll probably be puking up my organs in about a few seconds. <laughs> I 
Technically, he's the one crushing me. You're just dictating what to do. I have no words. Yeah, you really think she's going to stop because you're begging? Uh. God, that goes right through you. Exactly how high you aiming now? Just curious. You just don't you just don't learn, do you? I give you props for effort, but at this point you should probably just not antagonize her? Uh oh. I tried my best to stay strong and not give her the satisfaction of seeing me in pain or afraid. But in truth, I was scared out of my mind. All I wanted to do was shrink back in fear and agony. It took every fiber of my being to resist. Ah, so. Let me guess. She's got Ayumi at some point, and we're gonna end up seeing her get tortured. That's gonna be enough for Yoshiki to break down. <laughs> I think that's where we're going with this, because that seems to be the only thing that ever really shakes uh, Yoshiki is seeing Ayumi hurt. The red-eyed giant laid down his hammer. Rather than feeling relief, I was instead even more worried by Sachiko's sadistically overjoyed expression. I think I know where this is going, yeah. I was flabbergasted. I couldn't even speak. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's the only way to ever break him, is seeing his beloved Ayumi in trouble. you do to her? No, what did, he do, what did they do to her? Seriously. No, seriously, what the hell did they do to her? Do I want to know? And there's the garage door. Good timing. Well, debatable, considering you guys are just as much a victim of circumstance as anyone else. But at the same time, yes. I know you would. As she said this, she drew her face in close, and I could feel her tiny cold lips sucking the tears from my cheek. 
Oh, she really is a sadistic little brat, isn't she? I don't want to. Just saying. Okay, so it was a wrong end. We don't actually know what he would, what they did to Ayumi, but it was enough to basically have her go, Kill me, please! That's another wrong end. Yay! This is just racking up the points, isn't it? Okay, I guess we'll see what happens when we don't antagonize the little ghost boy. Funny that uh, the whole thing was with Sachiko and Yoshikazu, and Ryu was the one who attacked us. Just saying. <laughs>